Hey, what's up, everybody? Fake here. Welcome back to the video. Today we'll be going through episode. What episode is this? 28 of Pokemon Scarlet. Let's get into it. In the previous episode, we, uh. Well, firstly, I discovered that, uh, there has been a massive problem with a lot of my videos. That being that, uh. <laughs> My microphone wasn't connected until recently. So I figured that out. And, uh, well, I also defeated Cassiopeia. And then I completed my first class inside of school. That being biology with Mr. Jack. So in this episode, I kind of just want to continue doing classes. As you can see, biology is no longer here. Now it'll say I'd like to revisit a class, and when I click on that, it'll say biology. So, let's we'll start on math. You'd like math with Miss Time? Yes. Class will begin soon. Don't be sorry. Getting the classes out of the way will probably be a smart thing to do. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. My name is Tom, and I will be your math teacher. It's hard to put you all on the spot at the start of the class, but let me ask you a quick question. Do you enjoy numbers, arithmetic, and the like? What the hell is that? Oh my. Ha ha ha. Thank you for your honest responses. Some of you may like numbers and some may not. I think that makes a wonderful mix. But no matter your opinion on math, I hope you find yourself enjoying our lessons together. I'll do my best to find a good way to match up your interests with all types of math lessons. Speaking of which, are you all caught up on your study with Pokemon type matchup? For example, grass is strong against water, and water is strong against fire, correct? Say, you seem to be good with Pokemon, so let me ask you this. Bearing in mind that water is strong against fire, if the move Water Gun hits a fire-type Pokemon, what becomes of the move's damage? It's double. That's right, I knew I could count on you for this question, Faye. Using moves of a type that your opponent is weak to is a super effective tactic. It multiplies the damage of those moves by two. On the other hand, using moves of a type that your opponent is resistant to isn't very effective. It divides the damage of your moves by two. Uh, I don't mean to encroach to encroach our Miss Dangerous Battle Study territory, of course, but I thought it's best to use a lively topic as an example. I can make fun math fun. Even for those of you who don't much like the subject, don't you think? Oh my, is that the bell? I suppose that's all for now. What a shame. Looking forward to seeing you all in the next class. I hope you're looking forward to it too. Yeah. Nothing's more exciting than going to a math class than a Pokemon game. <coughs> Fantastic. Alright, let's go through math too. Have a fun class today. Tell me, do you all enjoy shopping? Buying tasty bread or choosing new clothes? Even just window shopping is so much fun.
today's class, I'd like to use shopping, one of my favorite, one of my own favorite hobbies, mind you, to teach you all about math. I'm sure everyone here has visited a Pokemon at least once. They sell all sorts of Pokemon items. Pokeballs are one of the many useful items you can find here. They cost 200 Pokedollars each. Now then, I'd like you all to do some thinking with me. One Pokeball is 200 Pokedollars. If you had 2,000 Pokedollars and bought as many Pokeballs as you could afford, how many would you receive? He said each of them is 11. That's correct. Well done, Faith. For 2,000 po Poke Dollars, you can afford to purchase a maximum of 10 Pokeballs. However, if you purchase 10 or more of any one type of Pokeball, you will also receive one from your ball, a special white ball, as a bonus. So the correct answer is, in fact, 11. <sighs> sure is nice to get a little bonus like that on a shopping trip, isn't it? Oh my, that's a bell? I suppose that's all for now. What a shame. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next class. I hope you're looking forward to it too. Last one. Yep. All right, sir. Let's do this. Good luck is coming your way. Fuck horoscope. So today I'd like to teach you all math while focusing on the topic of luck. Perhaps you have seen the following phrase crop up during Pokemon battles before. A critical hit. When a Pokemon's attack lands as a critical hit, the damage it deals is increased by half. In other words, it does one and a half times as much damage as it normally would. It is truly luck that determines whether your Pokemon lands a critical hit, or has one landed on it. This can cause a great upset in battle. Does anyone know what percent chance a Pokemon has of landing a critical hit? Uh, about 12%? Oh my, that, that might 
might cause a bit too critical of a situation to fake and guess four. The chance of landing a critical hit is said to be 1 in 24, which figures to roughly 4.17%. The odds are more favorable for certain moves, though. Why? Moves such as Stone Edge and Shadow Claw have about a 12% chance. Okay. You can also use a move called Focus Energy or an item known as a Dire Day. Both raise the critical hit ratio by two states. That's a 50% chance to land critical hit. that'll swing luck in your favor and may open the door for more strategic choices for you during battle. Oh my, is that the bell? I suppose that's all for now. What a shame. Next class will be our fun midterm exam. I hope you'll all be looking forward to it. <sighs> Alright. Now it's about to be the midterm for me. Ah. You guys aren't ready for me to try half Would you like math in this time? Yep, I would. Yeah, wait till I get the midterm started, my boys. Congratulations. 
Easy. Miss Time asked us to give this reward to any student who passed the exam. Thank you. Keep doing your best. Let's add the smallest you can be. Good, let's see how productive this will be. Alright, I'm dumping all of them on my board here. Alright, let's get started on map 4. Sorry that this isn't as entertaining as I would like it to be. I thought this was going to give me mediums and larges, not small and mediums. Yeah, that should have been a better job at guessing. Hello everyone, well done on the midterm again. Some of you earned perfect scores, and others seem to have a bit of trouble. But I can tell that you all tried your best. I'm quite pleased to say that every last one of you passed. I can only assume that this means you have all come to love numbers. Stay sharp and try your best for the rest of my classes too. Speaking of staying sharp, do you know how that word applies to Pokemon battles? The word, uh, that's right, it has to do with stat boost. Pokemon stats can rise and fall throughout the course of battle, correct? For example, if a Pokemon uses the move Work Up, its attack and special attack will rise by one stage each. And as you may know, each time a Pokemon's attack and special attack rises one stage, moves affected by that stat will deal 50% more damage. If that same Pokemon from our previous example were to use Work Up again, both its attack and special attack will have risen by two stages total. There's, this results in a 100% increase to damage dealt, making its moves twice as strong. Sword Stance, on the other hand, moves attack by two stages of at one, allowing the Pokemon to deal double damage after just a single use. Using Sword Stance twice would boost the Pokemon's attack by four stages. How much more damage than with this Pokemon deal? Quadruple damage? Ripple? Wow, that's great. You answered this difficult question with ease, Faith. Each stage that a Pokemon's attack or special attack stat is raised increases its damage by 50%. So being raised four stages would result in a four times 50% or 200% increase. The base damage of a move is 100%, so adding 200% to that gives us 300%. In other words, the next time the Pokemon uses the next move the Pokemon uses will deal, deal triple damage. Type matchups, critical hit damage, and other factors all play into these calculations as well. So even a small boost must be taken seriously. By the way, if a stat simply says "grow," that means it has gone up by one stage. If it rose sharply, that's two stages. And if it rose drastically, that's three stages. So, just so you know, the X attack and X special attack items, which can only be used in battle, can be used to sharply boost those respective stats. Oh my, is that the bell? I suppose that's all for now, what a shame. Today's lesson was a little difficult, so be sure to review what you learned in order to stay sharp. I'll see you all again next class. Alright. Alright. So what happened to the Psyduck? What happened to the Psyduck that was next to you? Now it's a Gengar. What happened to the Psyduck, man? Guess I can't talk to him. Yet everywhere else around the map, it makes me talk to a Pokemon if I look even just two degrees towards it. But of course, if I stare at this Gengar, which used to be a side of it, all it does is direct me back to this one. Alright, let's do it. Sure to review the last class's 
material in order to stay sharp. I know it was a little difficult with all that talk of multiplication percentages and the like. But today, we'll be talking about percentages again to learn about probability. That may sound like we're going to have another difficult class. Did, did you know that all of you already deal with prob probability on a regular basis? Pokemon moves generally have a property called accuracy, a term of probability that they will hit. The accuracy of tackle is 100, is 100 or 100%. So if you were to use tackle 100 times, you could expect it to hit all 100 times. The move hypnosis, which puts opponents to sleep, has an accuracy of 60 or 60%. That means you could expect it to hit 60 times to 100 uses. To put that another way, out of 100 uses, you could expect it to miss 40 times. Many of the truly powerful moves often tend to have lower accuracy. So when you're deciding whether to go slow and steady with moves that are sure to hit, or hard and fast with stronger but less accurate moves, you're already studying probability. Let me see here, perhaps Surf and Hydro Pump would be good examples for this discussion. Surf has a power of 90, its accuracy is 100, meaning you can expect it to hit every time. Hydro Pump's accuracy is only 80, but when it hits, its power is 110. So between Surf and Hydro Pump, which move would you want to use yourselves? How do you surf? Oh my, I see it's slow and steady wins the race for you, babe. I may have made it sound like there was a correct answer here, but there's not. You're free to use any move you want. Factors like PP or number of targets hit may have some moves more suited to certain situations. However, trading accuracy for power or vice versa is purely a matter of preference. This surf versus hydro pump debate has been ongoing for quite some time. Personally, I'm more invested in debating the rock type moves like rock slide and stone edge. Let me tell you, I can get really worked up talking about those moves, but oh my, there's the bell, what a shame. Next class will be the last of our time together, so show up 100% ready to go. You best believe I'm pulling up here. Fully 100%. I keep it on my side. Final math class before the finals. Hello everyone, I hope we can have fun once again today for our last class together. Last time we learned about probability, using move accuracy as an example. Probability is quite an interesting subject. Did you know that in a class of 40 students, there is a 90% chance that two of them will have the same birthday? This is true even despite the fact that there are over 300 days each year. Isn't that remarkable? So let's move on to today's topic before we get swept along with probability. I've been teaching you all how to calculate damage in this class using examples like type matchups, critical hits, stat boosts, and the like. All of these variables are multiplied together to calculate damage dealt to an opponent. However, did you know that there is an even simpler way to increase the damage of your Pokemon moves? All you have to do is have the Pokemon use a move to share the type with it. If a rock type Pokemon uses the rock type move Stone Edge, then the move's base power of 100 multiplied by 1.5 will become 150. Ground and rock type may seem like similar types, but if a ground type Pokemon uses Stone Edge, the move's power will remain 100. Super effective moves and critical hits also add multipliers onto this little number numerical increase. So it most certainly must not be taken lightly. Let me ask you a question to see if you understand what I'm talking about here. Say you have a move with a power of 100. If a Pokemon shares a type with this move, uses it, and, it, and hits an opponent that is weak to, this, to that type, what happens to that move's power? It becomes... it's a power of 300. You did that calculation all in your head? Well done, Fate. First, 
using a move that shares a type with its user multiplies the move's base power of 100 by 1.5, <coughs> making the power 150. The fact that the opponent is weak to the move's type then doubles that power from a 150 to 300. The original power of the move ends up being tripled. Isn't that amazing? What's more, if a Pokemon rationalizes and its terror type matches one of its original types, then the bonus it gets for using a move of that same in type increase from 1.5 to 2. Of course, being able to use a lot of moves in different types is great as well. That's one way you can surprise your opponent. In the end, your own innate characteristics are what will really let you shine the most. Bear in mind that this is true for both humans and Pokemon. It sure would make me happy if you could take those words to heart. But I suppose I should really have shared this basic advice right from our first lesson. My apologies. And just like that, class is over. The last of our time together flew by in the blink of an eye. It was so much fun to be able to teach all you eager students about numbers. Next class will be our fun final exam. Be sure to review the material well in preparation. Alright. Alright, let's begin the finals. Math final. Let's do it. Alright everyone, it's time to begin our final exam. I'm sure the fun experiences you all had in my class will serve you well as you answer. How many great balls could you purchase with 3,000 Poké Dollars if one cost 600 Poké Dollars? 6, 12, 18, 18, 18, 5. If a water type move with a power of 100 lands a critical hit on a grass type Pokémon, what will the move power be? What percent chance does Stone Edge have to land a critical hit? About 4%. Pokemon uses Swords Dance twice to boost its attack by 4 stages. How much damage will its physical moves can do? Triple the boost. If a Rock type Pokemon whose Terror type is Rock paralyzes, what will the power of its Rock type moves be multiplied to? Multiplied by 2. Alright everyone, time is up. Put your hands on your laps now. This test was the culmination of all I taught you, and I'm sure you all did just fine. You go and ask for your scores at the front desk, and then take a nice break. <sighs> no, no, that's what I'm about to do. Go check on my score, boys. It feels great to get a test out of the way, doesn't it? Let's take a look at your results. You must get three questions correct to pass the midterm exam and four questions correct to pass the final exam. Let's see how you did on your math test. You answered three out of five questions correctly. How? Which ones did I get wrong? Great, right, so I gotta retake the damn test. Alright, well I'm not reading the fucking dialogue again. I'm not reading all the dialogue again, just to... Just to... Yeah, I... Read it once, and then I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep doing this test until I pass it, and then once I pass it, I'm never doing it again. Cool. All right. Yeah, five. The water type both move with a power of 100 lands a critical hit on a grass type Pokemon. What will the most power be? I'm gonna say 75. Oh, by four stages. Nine. 
now hit the halfway point for the recording. That's nice. Feels great to get a test out of the way, doesn't it? Let's take a look at your results. You must get three questions correct to pass the midterm exam, blah 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 blah. Let's see how I do it. I answered the exact same amount. Are you kidding? Alright, let's take the test again. Alright, let's rethink the entire test. Oh my god. I need to get at least four questions correct, and I've been getting three every time. I've been typing the test twice and failed both times already. This is my third time doing the test. Great. Let's do this again. Five. The power of 100 layers of critical hit on a grass type board. So, he gets cut in half due to it being weak against grass, but then the critical hit as. Oh, so it'll be 75. Under normal conditions, what percent chance does the Stone Ash have to land a critical hit? About four percent. Triple damage. Two. Congratulations. Miss Time asked us to give this reward to any students who passed the exam. Fucking final. Oh my god. You know what? I have an idea. This is kind of an out of the blue idea, and it might be stupid. However, at the same time, it might actually not be stupid. So, I'm gonna say no. I'm thinking about the next few episodes of Pokemon of the Pokemon Scarlet series. I want to do one where I go in and I complete one of these classes. And once I complete the final test, you know, assuming it's kind of like this video where it gets past the 30 minute mark whenever I finish the final exam. Well, I'd like to end the video off after after that, after I finish a class. At least until I finish all of the, uh, the classes. And once I finish all the classes, I'll go move on to other things. At least until I get to the final class that I want to do. Once I finish the final class I want to do, hopefully it'll get me to around the 30 minute mark and I'll spend the rest of that episode grinding levels for my team to get ready for the, uh, for the Pokemon League. But anyways, on that note, I want to end the video off here, guys. So if you like yourself, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. If you want to check out my other socials, you can go to the about section of the channel or to the description of this video and all my other videos. With that all being said, my name is Fate. This has been episode 20... What episode is this? 28 of Pokemon Scarlet with the shortest amount of time in a recording possible for Pokemon Scarlet so far, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys!